A newly published paper is warning uh, that sea levels are rising more rapidly than previously thought, and the key to understanding the extent of the problem are ice sheets. One of the co-authors of the paper, John Englander, told CBS News, quote, with the current global temperature level and rate of temperature increase, I believe that we could get 5 to 10 feet before the end of the century. Wow. John joins us today to talk more about his paper. He is also an oceanographer and founder of the Rising Seas Institute. John, good to have you on. Before we get into your research, what are the major factors? Get us up to speed. What are the major factors which contribute to rising sea levels? Sure. Th thanks, Tom. Um, it's the ice sheets on Greenland and Antarctica. They hold 98% of the ice on land. And it's the ice on land that, as it melts, will raise sea level. That's the dominant factor. The second issue is that as the oceans warm, we have something called thermal expansion. There's a very slight increase in the ocean's volume just as the temperature rises. And that's considerable, but the uh, melting ice sheets will be much bigger and glaciers. And then the third issue, more regionally, is that there's land subsidence or uplift, and that affects sea level more on a local uh, level. So where the land is going down, like New Orleans or Jakarta or Venice, sea level appears to be rising faster. Those are the three main issues for sea level rise. Sure, we already see uh, coastal flooding in places like Florida. I've been to Bangladesh. I've seen it firsthand. Um, five to ten feet in addition to what we already see is, is staggering. What did the study reveal about the impact of ice sheets, and how will a better understanding of them help in the long run? Because we certainly need to do something. Sure. What our study focused on was uh, was really speaking to the IPCC, the big intergovernmental panel on climate change, which is the august and very definitive um, report on, on climate that comes out every five or six years. And we were just pointing out, really, that the model or the, the, the top-level characterization that they use of about a meter, or 30, just under three feet, that 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 is no longer the worst case for sea level rise. And we really got into the weeds a little bit in terms of explaining at a technical level why the models for ice sheet collapse are a bit um, lacking. They're, they're a little primitive, actually. They're not nearly as sophisticated as hurricane models and generally the climate models. We, um, we were just pointing out that we've got to prepare for kind of the worst case scenarios, which are now widely described as being anywhere from uh, six feet to eight feet to possibly 10 feet. Those are studies from California, NOAA, the uh, southeastern counties of Florida have all looked at much worse scenarios than the one meter of sea level rise that the IPCC has used and as uh, shown in that chart, I think, yeah. And obviously the implications obviously. of that is that <laughs> it jeopardizes it the safety jeopardizes of the millions of people who live along the coasts in every country, you know, every every continent. Um, if sea levels are rising more rapidly, what kind of impact will that have on climate change and global warming? Sure. Sea level by itself doesn't directly affect climate. It's the other way around. That on a warmer planet, we have less ice. The oceans are warmer, so sea level gets higher. And the reverse happens. We've, if we look back two and a half million years, we've had ice ages pretty much every 100,000 years. And that was a natural phenomenon. What most people don't know is that with those 100,000-year ice age cycles, that sea level naturally moves up and down 400 feet. 120 meters, kind of mind-boggling to wow. think about how the coast would change. It's been level for about 6,000 years, which is pretty much recorded human history, and that's why we don't think it changes. So we've been fooled because we were at the turning point from when sea level was going up and then when it kind of rounds the corner and starts going down. That would have been the natural cycle. But now it's going further up because the planet's warmer than even in the natural ice age cycles. Well, what can be done now to protect? You say we're on these kinds of crazy, you know, centuries long trajectories of sea levels rising. Um, what can be done now to protect coastal communities? And is there anything we can do to prevent or slow uh, rising sea levels? Let me take the last part first, because it's the, it's the uh, kind of one on everybody's mind. How do we slow the warming? How do we slow the ice melting? How do we slow sea level rise? And that really comes down to reducing the greenhouse gases, principally carbon dioxide, also methane and nitrous oxide. But carbon dioxide is the product of burning fossil fuels. And that's why there's so much attention on going green with electric cars and renewable energy and so on. That can slow the warming and slow the ice melting and slow sea level rise. But this century, probably only about 20 or 30 percent of an effect. So 
that's important. The second thing is to get ready for more flooding because we're getting strange and stronger storms than, we, than we're used to. We're getting heavier rainfall because the oceans evaporate more and that moisture has to come back down as either rain or snow. So we're getting flood events, but flood events, as we all know, are sudden. They either come in with a storm, like a hurricane on the coast. They come downhill as rainfall that gathers uh, depth as it goes further downhill. At extreme high tides, sometimes called king tides, we get higher water levels. All of those are short-term flood events. The water comes in and does recede and we can recover. Sea level is a bit different. It won't change more than an inch or so a year probably for quite a while, but we could get to a foot a decade. That's what we're talking about. And that's gonna be huge because it becomes a higher baseline. And so if sea level's a few feet higher, then those storm events are even higher. So we need to slow the warming, we need to prepare for short-term flooding events, and we need to start planning for sea level rise, which is now following the pattern of the last several million years that in a warmer world, there's less ice on land and higher sea level. And then there's all the other environmental things like recycling and plastics in the ocean and clear, clean air that we're concerned about, but those are separate environmental issues. So the three climate issues are slow the warming to slow sea level rise, be prepared for more flooding, which is gonna come in a variety of forms, and then begin adapting to sea level, which will be many feet higher over the course of this century. Let's hope we can figure some of that stuff out very soon. John Englander, thank you. Thank you, Tom.